Uh, Payne got his ankle stepped on yesterday. He'll be in a boot for uh, a week or so. Uh, we expect him back in two to three weeks. He'll be okay. Any other injury updates? Uh, Ryan Anderson had uh, back spasms. He'll probably miss today, and hopefully we'll get him back. He's got to hopefully get recovered here and be back tomorrow. Zach Brown is day-to-day. -day. It just depends on how he feels. It's nothing serious. It's just how much he wants to push through it, how much he can push through it without redoing it. In Zach's absence, Josh Harvey Clemens, whether it was in the spring when he was out for the voluntary portions or the past couple of days, Josh Harvey seems to have taken that spot as the backup. What, what has pushed him into that role above Vigil and Spate, guys who played last year at that linebacker spot more than he did? Well, I think uh, it's been good for him. Last year, we pretty much had him only playing sub. Now we're trying to get him acclimated to some base role uh, at linebacker. Um, and he's learning the defense and improving. You know, Spate's still there. Vigil's still there. Uh, Sean Dion, we're trying to get him up to speed. So in Zach's absence, we have some guys getting quality reps that need it. With, with Duran missing that much time in, for his rookie year, what kind of a setback is that for him? Uh, not much. He's in great shape. He's big, strong, physical. He'll probably get stronger in his two weeks uh, working out. So uh, he's in great shape, so it's not a big deal. He's already very smart, knows the defense, so he's, he's in good shape. Uh, what can we expect today with the uh, pads on? W will the pads come on today? Yeah, we'll have shoulder pads on today, so we'll get a little hitting. Um, you know, I limited some reps today just because we had, we were down two or three defensive linemen, two or three outside backers, a couple inside backers. You know, so we're – we're down some bodies, but uh, we'll have to get as many reps as we can without um, putting too many in the IV tank. Broader question about your approach, not to look too far ahead, but you've got the streak of not winning the openers. How much does that play into your training camp approach here at how you want to handle these practices? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think we're just trying to, for right now, early stages, we're trying to uh, reacclimate them to our system um, slowly but surely. I think the first five to six practices will it's mainly system oriented. After that, we'll get into more situational type ball, uh, third down, red zone, move the ball, no huddle, all that good stuff. But uh, right now, we're just about trying to install our system after that. Uh, we'll push the envelope and, and push them and make sure we get them ready, uh, more so than we have, hopefully, for Arizona. Jay, how's Tim Settle looked in these first couple days? He had a, uh, it looked like a good one-on-one -on -one session yesterday. And will he get a little bit more action, I guess, now with you guys being down th two, three? Um, yeah, I was really it. impressed with Tim yesterday because we had two or three guys down. He had to take a lot of reps. And he got stronger, actually, as the practice went on. And, and, and this is a great experience for some of these young guys. You know, unfortunately, we lose a couple guys uh, to injury. But uh, fortunately, some guys we really need to look at, uh, we get a good look at. Like Tim's a great example. Had a great day yesterday. Jay, does Adonis Alexander missing rookie meeting camp and OTAs, put him behind the eight ball a little bit as training camp begins, or is that not a big a deal as maybe one would think? No, it puts him behind. You know, it's hard because we, we throw a lot at him day one. We expect him to remember and retain what they went through in OTAs and, and, and uh, mini camp and all that good stuff, but he wasn't here, so he's behind. Um, so he'll catch up. He's a, he's a bright kid, and, uh, you know, Coach Torian Gray had him before at Virginia Tech, so he has a great way of communicating with him, and, and uh, we'll get him up to speed, but he is slightly behind. For Settle, you guys drafted – Payne and him together just to kind of help the defensive line. But is there anything that Settle gives you that Payne doesn't, or just how do their games differ? No, they're different. You know, I think, uh, you know, Settle's probably, I don't know, Payne's a little bit stronger right now, that's for sure. But uh, Settle gives you a little bit of uh, position flex also, but he's probably more so of a nose, I guess. So, uh, Payne's probably more along the line. He can play every spot along the line. With Josh, with Josh Doxson, what's the next step in his progression? And in terms of if he's able to stay healthy, what do you want? To, what do you think you can see out of him, or what can he do in, in his third year? Well, I think Josh. You know, it just depends. It's hard to say statistically. I think people are looking for the stats to fly off the charts. But you know, around here, the way we spread the ball around to Chris and Jordan and uh, Jameson and all these other guys, it's going to be hard for and Paul now and uh, you know Maurice Harris and Rob Davis when he gets in there. It's, it's going to be hard for one guy to have a fantasy football superstar year but you know I think in the red zone is where he's going to be most dangerous that's what we're hoping that he can really dominate in that area of the field on some tight window throws on third down um, and just continue to get better and better and, and when the ball's there for him and uh, he goes out and makes the tough catches. Jay yesterday you mentioned that Jonathan Allen's coming out of his shell a little bit that's personality wise what do you want to see from him as a player year two obviously I imagine Health is one, but what are your expectations of last year's first-round pick? Yeah, we have very high expectations for Jonathan. He's an excellent football player, without a doubt, and very uh, 
He's not a one-dimensional player at all. He plays a run equally as well as he can rush a passer. So um, we just got to make sure we keep him fresh and healthy somehow. But uh, he's a very tenacious guy, loves football, um, prepares his tail off. Tom Sula's doing a great job with him, and I have no worries about Jonathan. The only thing we just got to do is keep him on the field. He's going to be a great player. What can we expect from Trent, Morgan, and Jordan with pads on today? Uh, I think Morgan might get another rep or two. We're just going to ease him in it. Trent, we're probably going to stick with individual for a little while. And then uh, Jordan, he'll get some one-on-ones today, maybe seven-on-seven seven tomorrow or the next day, but uh, he'll probably get four or five one-on-ones today. Um, going back to Josh Doxson in the red zone, what is it, are there some things there that you say, okay, now you're in your third year, you should be doing or you can be doing this more or better? What are some of the things he's had to learn? Well, to I think become? that he's, he's, been, he's been a great option for us, or we just hadn't got many opportunities to him for whatever reason. You know, it's, so it's not totally his fault that he hasn't been as productive as people anticipate. Uh, it's play calling, um, you know, sometimes a quarterback went elsewhere. It just so happens that that's where the play design was. So we're hoping that he does get more opportunities. That's a big thing. With the opportunities that he does get, we just hope he takes advantage of them. Jay, uh, back at minicamp, there were a couple of undrafted free agents that at the end of it, you kind of mentioned that guys that stood out. I know it's very early here, but you're using guys in all different, with the first team, second team, third team. So I'm just wondering if anybody is, from that perspective, has sort of stood out so far, and what are the things that you're kind of looking at? You know, we're just, uh, you know, right now, we're just trying to get everybody involved. You know, I'm not going to try to make any uh, spotlights on any players right now. I just want everybody to just keep working and taking advantage of the reps. And then once the Jets get here, we'll get more looks at them. And then obviously the preseason games will be big for them. You know, these guys are trying their best to compete, study, stay healthy, obviously hydration and all that good stuff. Um, but uh, I think I've been impressed with a number of these guys, the way they've come out here and, and got themselves ready to play and take advantage of the reps. Still got a long way to go as far as what to do, how to do it. Uh, but they've all bought in and done a good job. Um, the sort of the heat just now. How do you sort of balance the weather, the mucky sort of feel that adds extra, I guess, effort in the pads, just balancing pushing your players but keeping them healthy yeah, and safe that's, in that's, this that's weather? Yeah, that's tough. You know, we've, we had a lot of guys with uh, IVs. We got, you know, this big thing is hydration and, and their diet and their sleep and all that stuff plays a part into it. And then I got to make sure we take some time off, make sure we get them plenty of water during practice, after practice, before practice, all that stuff. So. Uh, I, I got a pretty good gauge and um, monitoring how we're doing and how they're doing without trying to, you know, we still need to practice those. So there's a fine line that we talk about all the time. So it's kind of my job. Jay, how has uh, Quentin Dunbar done since the offseason taking advantage of the opportunity he has? And how do you feel about your cornerback depth overall? I feel good about it. And Quentin's done a good job. I mean, he's got a lot of confidence for a guy who's only played corner a few years in his life. You know, I tell you what, jeez. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I like Quentin. I think uh, mentally I, I like where he's at. You know, I think when he first started playing corner, all he wanted to do was play press, but up and run man-to-man. -man. And he could do that because he's long and can run. You know, now I think he's starting to expand his game a little bit. He's playing more off coverage uh, and better in zone coverages uh, and better in the running game and, and knowing where to fit. Um, the big thing with him is just continue to get better. But he's got all the intangibles you want for a corner, long, fast. Um, and our cornerback depth, you know, Fabian over there and obviously Skandrick and, and Josh and now uh, Adonis we added. Uh, Danny is one of the undrafted free agents that we really like. He's done a great job. Um, so we, we have a number of guys over there um, that are doing pretty good. Jay. Hi, Jay. Hi. Good morning. Um, you touched on this yesterday, but teams seem to be more aware of uh, the importance of the backup quarterback. I mean, they, they always have been. But do you think the Eagle, what the Eagles did last year has highlighted that? and teams are really putting an emphasis on finding a backup who is capable of starting for a long period of time. Yeah, you have to. You know, that's as important of a position as there is on your roster, really. You know, even though he may not play one down in the regular season, uh, there's a chance he could play 16 games, 15 games, whatever it might be. So uh, you have to have a good one for a number of reasons. One, he's got to support the starter. Two, he's got to be ready at all times. Um, and three's got to be good for your football team and handle scout team and all that stuff for, for the defense. So uh, Colt is magnificent at all that. So uh, we feel good about having Colt here, and it's a very important position, as the Eagles found out and, and a number of other Super Bowl teams have found out. I think the Patriots found out with Brady, I believe. <laughs> Thank you.